I was checking out a website that my buddy Paul just launched and I saw this cool section where these cards seem to stack. This is something that I've seen done before but I've never tried to do myself so with a little bit of experimentation I came up with my own implementation here. What's neat about this is that it's CSS only and it only takes a couple lines of CSS to get this up and running and generate blocks. If you'd like to see how it's done then stick around and let's get started. All right, so I've already gone ahead and laid out this page here, but I'm gonna talk you through everything I did. It's just kind of irrelevant to the demo we're actually doing today, and it would take a long time to set all this up. So let me just talk you through what we have here. Essentially, we have a few different sections here, four different sections. We're really only gonna be worrying about this stacking section here. These other ones that I've labeled irrelevant sections really just go below these cards here. This is where the irrelevant section start is here. I just needed something below that content in order to have some room to scroll beneath these cards here. So again, we're really only focused on these four cards, which you can see here that just kind of flip flop back and forth in layout. Now inside this section, we have the stacking section here, the wrapper, which just wraps around this to contain everything to our content width. It's just an intersection here. In fact, if we go to our sizing, we can see the max width is set to our variable, which is the content width of our website. And we have the left and right margin set to auto. Now, the only thing that's changed from the default is I did set this display to flex instead of the default layout. I set that flex direction to column and I put a row gap of 24 pixels. That's just making sure each one of these cards stack on top of one another, and we have 24 pixels of gap in between them. So here is the stacking section header. This is just here for aesthetics. We're not gonna be really worrying about this. And then we have our four stacking cards. So we have one, two, three, four. Like I said, they're all identical. They're just flip-flopping back and forth. This would be whatever content you want inside of it. All right, so now that we know kind of the layout of what we're working with, let's start getting everything working the way we want to. The first thing we need to do is go to the stacking section wrapper, and we need to search for position here. So I'm gonna search for position, and I'm gonna change this position to relative instead of default. We're gonna need this because we're gonna use sticky position, and we need to know what that's going to stick to, and we're gonna be sticking it to the stacking section wrapper. Next, we're gonna go to all four of these cards. Here, we're gonna to wanna to add a class to all these cards to control the sticky and to write our keyframe animation here in a second. So I'm just gonna call this stack hyphen card and we'll go ahead and hit create. And now once we start editing here, you can see the stack card is attached to each one of these here. We can see stack card on this first one, stack card on the second one. I just had multiple of them selected so I could add those classes all at once. So let's go ahead and go into our stack card here and we're gonna go down to our position and we're gonna change this position to sticky. Now we need to set an inset or coordinates here of where we want it to stick to. And really I want this to stick to the top of the page, but I want it to respect the padding we have in this section. Now this is gonna be important. We're just using a raw pixel value here in production, I would probably abstract this out into some kind of variable because we're gonna need to reuse this number several times and make sure it's consistent every time we're using it. But for now, let's just go the magic number route. So let's go back to our section here and we can see our top padding is 80 pixels. This is a value I said that I would probably abstract into some kind of variable, but for now, let's just memorize that we're using 80. Okay, again, back into our stack card class and under sticky position, I'm gonna change that top value to 80 pixels. So now if we go ahead and save this and preview it on the front end, we can see as we scroll down this page that these cards are sticking to the top of our section, exactly 80 pixels from the top of our viewport here, which is exactly what we're wanting. Now this last card kind of swipes them all away so we can get down to the content below it. So this is working perfectly, and this would be a great effect on its own, but I think with just a little bit of CSS, we can make this look a whole lot nicer. So let's go ahead and jump into the customizer here, into our additional CSS, where we can write just a little bit of CSS to get this working. So here, we wanna target that stack card. So I'll type in period stack hyphen card and open and close my curly brackets. What we're gonna need to do here is create an animation. So I'm gonna type in animation, colon, and then I can just name my animation whatever I want. I'm just gonna call it stack. Underneath that, we need to add animation timeline. And then here, we're gonna have to write a view animation. So we're gonna type in the word view and open and close our parentheses. The first value in here is just going to be auto. 
And the second one is going to be a calculation. So I'm going to type in the word calc and then open and close my parentheses again. Now I want to start with this being a hundred percent. We'll do a space and then we'll do a minus symbol. And now I want to use that 80 pixel value that we use for the section padding we had here and for the top coordinates of our sticky here. Like I said, if all this was abstracted out into a variable, we could use this variable here just to make sure we're being consistent. But for now, just for demo purposes, I'm going to go ahead and put 80 pixels. We'll go ahead and add our semicolon at the end of that line. And now we need to write our keyframe animation. To do that, we'll type in the word keyframes and we'll name this stack so we can match the animation name we gave to our stack card here. We'll go ahead and open and close our curly brackets. And all we need to write is the two declaration. So I'm going to do two and then open and close our curly brackets. And here's where we can create our animation. There's two things I want to do as these get to the top of the viewport. The first thing I want to do is blur them. So if we type in the word filter colon blur, uh, open and close our parentheses, and I'm going to do something like 20 pixels. Now we can go ahead and preview this effect. You can see as I scroll down here, this card in the background is starting to get blurry. And as the next one approaches it, it starts to get blurry as well. And they kind of just fade out behind one another. That again is a cool effect on its own, but I think we can take it one step further to make it look nicer. Here we're going to add a scale animation. So I'll just type in scale and I'm going to do 0.5, which is 50%. So now if we scroll down, we'll see the card in the background start to get smaller as it blurs and it almost looks as if it's moving backwards. This to me is a really cool 3D effect that makes this section look really, really nice. Of course, we always want to consider accessibility anytime we're doing any kind of effect like this. So just before our declarations here, I'm going to paste in at media. We'll open and close our parentheses and inside of it, we'll write prefers reduce motion colon no preference. Now we can open our curly bracket here and then close it down at the bottom of this. And this is just going to wrap this in a prefers reduced motion media query. If somebody has their browser set to prefers reduced motion, it will look just like it did before we did any of those effects here where they just stack on top of each other. But I don't have my computer set to those settings, so we will get the effect here. That way everybody gets kind of the effect that they'd like. Now I've mentioned a couple times abstracting that 80 pixel value into a variable. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'll walk you through that. It's very simple to do and it's just going to make sure that this effect always stays consistent and that if we do end up changing that 80 pixels to something else, it will update across everywhere. So to do that, I'm going to type in colon root and open and close my parentheses. We'll type in double dash, which is going to allow us to create a custom property here. And we'll just call this stack padding top. Now inside here, we'll go ahead and put our 80 pixel value in here. And let's go ahead and copy this variable we created to our clipboard. Now we want to replace it here where we had that 80 pixels. So to do that, we'll type in var, open and close our parentheses, and then I'll paste in that stack padding top. That's just going to replace that 80 pixel raw value with whatever this variable is, which right now is 80 pixels. Let's go ahead and publish that. I'm going to refresh the editor on the back end. We'll open this up and everywhere we had that 80 pixels before, let's go ahead and replace that with our variable. So the first one here is in the section padding. So I'm just going to type in var, paste in our variable here and then close our parentheses. That will make sure we're using that 80 pixels there. And then we also had it on the class here for our stack card. So I'm going to go ahead and open that class here in the inset. Again, I'm going to type in var, paste in our variable and close it up. And we'll go ahead and save these changes. We'll go ahead and refresh here in the customizer just to make sure everything's working the way it was before. And as we see, everything's working just like it did before. But now if we wanted to change this variable, right now it's at 80, but let's say we wanted to change it to 300, we can see that went ahead and updated that padding at the top. And it's also changed the way these are starting to stack. They're now stacking from 300 pixels from the top instead of the 80 we had before. This way we just have one place to replace this number instead of three different places, but I'll go ahead and put it back at 80 for now so we can have our effect just like we wanted it. And I'm sure you're wondering how this looks responsively as well. If we go down here to our mobile breakpoint and start scrolling down, these work just the same on mobile, which is really great. The only thing you need to really be sure to be careful of is how tall these cards are. If they take up more than the user's viewport, they might end up starting to fade away before you even get to the bottom of the content. If you just imagine this card is twice as tall, then it's going to be a bit of a UX problem as people wouldn't be able to get to everything in the card. So definitely check that. But otherwise, it works really great on mobile. 
I should also mention that these view transitions don't have perfect browser support either. Right now is the time of this recording, it's 73.56, which is typically something I would not put into production. However, this is a progressive enhancement. Just like when we use the prefers reduced motion media query, anybody who has a browser that doesn't support this view transition is just gonna see the card stacking without them fading away and shrinking into the background. You can see this does not work in Firefox whatsoever. It also doesn't work in Safari. So this is gonna be really for Chromium based browsers, which still is the largest percentage of people using it. But since it's a progressive enhancement, I wouldn't mind putting this into production since it's still gonna work and it's not gonna break the functionality of the website. A huge shout out to Paul for the inspiration on this one. I definitely wanna use this on a project in the future. And there's so many different things you could do. Here, I just did the blur effect along with the scale, but you could combine any kinds of effects to do all kinds of different things with this. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.